let's build a plastic contemptor dreadnought and make it look fancy. Tasty that, eh? That's uh, Warp Stormer. I'll put links in it. I think that sounds a confessional video. I've got a Contempto Dreadnought fetish. I might be building my sixth or seventh one. And I have a thing for making them look dynamic. They can stand up and they can shoot. He's got his foot on it, he's booted it in, or he's braced himself as he shoots his guns. But, you know, there's a bit going on there. Or you can run around. Running, look, foot barely on the ground, just touching. Kicking up rubble. The other one's stomping into stuff and bent it up. And, oh, it's dynamic. And another little tip. I mean, there's going to be loads of them. But magnetised stuff, if it can snap off, it will. You know, better to rock up with the two parts in your phone rather than, oh, mate, anybody get any super glue? So you can magnetise it on. These, by the way, are mid paint job. Cut to the Alpha Legion army I'm working on. No, you don't want to see that. Let's get to business. Right, well, look, there they are. Um, I said I'd zoom in on them, didn't I? So he's just got his foot on a bit of rubble. Brace himself, and then the other lad, not Matt Five these are a bit shiny, stomping across the battlefield, maybe shooting that, maybe swinging that in attack. Those are the sprues. Sprues, we've seen those. You've probably got one. Um, weapons, body and stuff. I'm going to chop these and put them in kind of the same lumps that you would expect in the resin kit. It seems to go together in that fashion. Certainly there's a proxy for everything I recognise from building the, the few that I have out of resin. Shoulders seem to be in multiple parts, scattered around the sprue. But I don't matter, we'll crack on. So here's my side cutters. I'm going to start clipping away. Now I don't know how experienced some of you are. This might be the one that's gotten you into the hobby. So I'll show you a little trick here. Hmm, what's that? That's weird. That seems to have a gap. I've never seen that before. Those little feeds and vents. Plastic goes in, air goes out. There's a gap. All the others connect, but those ones don't. Weird, never seen that before. Anyway, shut up, get on one. So you'll notice as I clip, I'm putting the flat side of my cutters, flat side, difficult to focus on but they've got a flat side and that wants to go against your model bam 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 there we go and then that way you'll get less material sticking out which you will have to scrape away so I've got these little sanding pads um, you can get them from model shops or you can get them from the pound land and the dollar store um, in very high grits the higher the number the finer they are and you can just again the flat bit against the flat feel it's flat give it a little rub and that way your two parts the two halves will go together and you won't have those big gaps where your paint's going to just yeah you're going to get a big line down the front of this dreadnought if you're not careful or if you don't scrape and sand those away That is a very sharp knife, and yes, it is against my hand. But I'm putting very light pressure, and it's barely moving. And as you can see, it just bounces off the skin. That's a scraping tool, rather than the knife. Just forget I've got one. I use the knife, because it's there. I've got a sharp knife, and a blunter knife, that I use for scraping. That one's a bit of a bugger to pick up, because it's so flat, I ain't got no fingernails. So, plastic glue. This stuff, everybody raves about it. I'm not a big fan, to be honest, uh, but it's very common. It's 
quite handy because it's thin and pours into the spots. I'm going to blast through this, just clipping parts. These little toes, they're weird, aren't they? There's four of them that go on these feet. You can see I've glued up the body. I'll stop and I'll probably explain stuff as it gets interesting. If there's anything unusual, but for the most part, this is a pretty straightforward kit. But um, on the Contempt of Dreadnought, on the resin ones, you've got slightly different feet. And you see how it's a longer and a shorter one. The toes kind of bend up to give you kind of a that running position as you're leaning forward. Now there's the torso. You can see how different that is to the resin. And how those gates would be a pick, pick to uh, cut. So... These are the thigh pieces, and this, where the gate with the sprue meets the body, is just between two rivets. It's a bit of a bugger to get at. Now, if you haven't got one of those files, you're going to want to use that technique with the knife and scrape across. So there's all the bits, all glued up, lined up. Do -do 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 -do. Now I've got some of the resin bits. I'm going to use those because they got. Skulls on the knuckles. Oh yeah, I've been making a curry. I don't smoke, that's not tar. I've been making a curry. I'll have that for tea uh, in my break. I've zoomed in too much. I've zoomed in too much. I do know what I'm doing, honest. There we go, I remembered. I'm out of focus. I'll cut this bit. I'll cut, I'll cut that bit, it's out of focus. So resin, plastic, big sword. You've got a big sword, right? Uh, it's a grey knight thing. Oh, and a flight stand. You need a flight stand? Flight stand? Yeah, yeah. Contempted Reddits need flight stands. Anyway, I've got reference pictures. This is on my Pinterest. Here it is. Alpha sword, number two. And I quite fancy this one. It's quite similar to the Colcaridon one that I did yeah, years ago. And what I'm looking at here is just how much of a twist there is through the body, where the legs are going to go, looking at the angles that the human body can do and what the contemptor can do. And within reason, you know, this is just, I'm not going to be able to mimic this exactly, although I get pretty close. So this is just a reference. I'll blue tack it up and we'll try and get as close as we can to that within reason uh, certainly the feel of that so you can see how useful the blue tack is before i glue these things up i can move them around when you're gluing resin because it's super glue you need to hold it in place and it goes off plastic glue you've got a little bit of working time and you can do fine adjustments tweak the angle and then when you're happy with it leave it in that position and it will go off super glue you haven't really got that time so just looking at the thighs there, they were uh, just making sure I can tell which way around the go. It's more obvious on the resin kit, I can't remember why. Um, it's slightly more obvious, which is the front and the back. So there's the two shapes, and they've actually copied it faithfully on the, on the plastic kit. Just looking at these feet, how they're going to sit in. They seem to work in a very similar fashion, similar range of movement. So these guys really are... Really do fit together with the resin ones nicely, it would appear. Oh, yeah, where am I going to put that? Uh, previously, I put it kind of in there under the flared leg and into the ball joint of the, of the foot. Now, I don't know if I trust that all the way out on this particular model, so I'm going to try and go a bit more central. Um, and by central, I mean I put his robot bum. Robots don't have bums, so that's not rude. So YouTube can't strike me, I think. So I'm pretty pleased with how that was all gone. Before I glue it up, I'm going to make some marks. So this one's quite handy. Those rivets line up with those. That one's down the middle. So it's pretty obvious. These ones slightly cocked off, so I'm looking at that rivet. And it lines up with the corner of that little element there. So that'll be my reference. Otherwise, I would make pencil marks. So here we go, slapping some glue on. This glue part is quite near the, the end of its life. 
so I have to shake the hell out of it to get any to splash onto the brush. That's what I'm doing. I'm not doing some weird motion. It's just to get the glue on the brush. Ordinarily, when it's a bit more full, it'd be fine. So, glued that up, moved it round to the position, hold it for a few seconds, set it down. You'll see I do this as well. I paint the glue on one bit and I smooth it around and around. And then I do it on the other bit and I smooth it around and around. And what I'm doing there is just making sure both sides have dissolved a little bit. And then when you push them together, you'll feel it grip. Just tidying up that edge because it's a bit rough where it's been sanded. The glue will smooth it. So I'm painting that round gently, gently, so it doesn't like you get a blob and it all runs off. Don't have too much on the brush. Like you don't want too much paint in your paintbrush and it splashes everywhere. Same kind of thing with your glue. Okay, so I've looked at my reference image. Happy with that. Little twist. Pulled back on the torso. Lovely. So you can see I've got the hips twisted open. You know, it's a cartoon of what this guy is doing. It just conveys that the body's flying forward and that the feet will come forward in a minute and as the hands with the sword come flying down. You can see that it's going to go into these little resin hands with these little resin fingers. I say, I've got these from another one. They're going to be quite prominent because they're going to be high up on this, on this guy. So you're going to see them right down. So skull knuckle dusters look cool. The other guy doesn't need them. Uh, it's going to have gun-toting loony rather than screaming. Uh, that's going to be tricky. I can't do the big screaming mouth because he's got a big robot head. So, popping a bit of blue tack into the hands, into the wrists, if you like, um, just to get all this sketched out. Just looking at the orientation, you can see there's a slight lean um, there's a little indicator on the back of those arms that will show you uh, what lines up. Look at those lovely little skulls. Skulls, 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 skulls. Now that one's going to have the sword in it, so that will go in there like that. So what I'm doing, I'm just looking at the final position for the sword and then kind of working back a little bit in this case. Now I've just noticed the resin bit is slightly wider than the plastic one, or is the plastic one narrower than the resin one? Yeah, um, interestingly, they've left a hole in it for a magnet as well. Uh, so you magnetize for different loadouts, different guns. But it also happens to be with a wrist, sorry, with the elbow forearm join. So I'm going to swap that out. So shoving a bit of blue tack into the shoulder joint so that we can get, again, this sketched up. That one's a tricky one. It's a whole bunch of movement in there. So I'm gonna to struggle to hold that. Blue tack what you can, hold what you can't. So yeah, I can comfortably get that over his head. There's a nice bit of movement. It's not banging against the main body piece. Happy with that. Let's glue it up. Doodly 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 do, fast, 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 gluey, gluey, gluey. You know how this works now. You've got it, right? Glue on both parts. A little bit of a wiggle. And I'm just making sure there you can see that little mark. That's the nubbin that the various weapons that you get inbuilt in the palm. You'll have a magazine for your bolt gun. You'll have a little tank for your flamer. You'll have some kind of technical doodads for your plasma and so on. I tend not to put them on because you could magnetise them. But, um, you know, it's one of those ones when you're writing an army list, you tend to jiggle those points around. Um, you might have a bolt gun one day and a plasma the next, uh, one game to the next. So there I was just checking that there's a nice gap between the arm and the carapace, the shoulder. Um, didn't want them again parts touching each other looks a clumsy if there's a bit of breathing space um, you get a nicer silhouette 
So similar thing now with the other arm. I'll put a bit of blue tech on that. On that elbow piece just to hold it. Now, because I'm using super glue there, I'm using my activator. That essentially is this horrible chemical shit that helps your super glue go off faster and melts your lungs. Be careful with it. Um, this one's a spray can, but you can get little pump activated ones. That just... So I'll glue that arm up. Again, little wiggle, wiggle, make sure it's in place. Now I've used thick super glue, squished it in there with the little sculpting tool so that I know it's on both surfaces, I'll wiggle it around and then I'll glue that up. Tiniest little squeeze just to get a little dribble of that activator out. Yeah, these joints, they're a bit tricky. I had to re-glue them twice. So I've put the hands on my super glue, that's my thin one, that's the thick one, just because I can hold them up to the camera. It's also quite convenient for getting the glue in those little sockets. Now you'll see there's different fingers, two for the outside, a thumb slightly shorter, and then one in the middle. They've got a slightly different moulding on, the, on them if you look carefully. I'll point that out as we go. So there's your thumb. I'm going to offer it up. I want that to be really open, so I'm going to trim just a little bit of the resin away from there. And I'm just scraping while I'm at it the bottom of those joints. They're really shiny, um, so the super glue might just slide off of it, and you might find you've lost a thumb at one point if it takes a knock. So give it a scratch. So that's called keying up a surface. You hear me saying this a lot. Um, by keying it up, you get a rough surface and the glue can grab into those little scratches. Well worth doing, just so you don't lose parts. I'm getting very warm, I've got a cat on me. All right, here we go, fingers in, you can see the slight, just hold it in place, lovely. That's the offhand. using up a little bit of that glue that you can see I've put on a on the side of a base as a palette. Just getting a little dab of that and dribbling it in. He's moving around, he's sliding off and he's gonna fall. Uh, he'll stay there, he'll stay there, he'll slide off, he'll slide off. Fucking idiot. Anyway, feet. Is it feet? What am I doing? Oh yeah, that's his um that's robot butter. Don't get that on many channels. That is a uh, bum on robot. Oh. oh, eyes water. Lovely. There we go. That's a footless, handless robot on a stick. Anyway, look. I'm going to blue tag on there and stick the fingers on. Struggling to find something to sit it on for you to see what I'm doing. I've got these one, two, three blocks, so it's one inch by two inch by three inch, and they've got these convenient little holes, and I can hold the sword in place, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I fucked up and put the sword the wrong way round. Whatever. Um, works it out in the end. So, these are double action tweezers, so they, you squeeze them, they open up, and then when you release, they clamp. So it holds them in the jaws without you using the muscle power. You see the little uh, detail I was talking about on the outside of that finger. And on the other one. The middle ones don't have it because they, they've got a detail either side where they fit in place. So just checking them, making sure I'm not going to have to do any um, carving away. So I've popped them all out. I'll do the same thing, a little blob of glue in the bottom of each of those knuckles and then drop them in. The big blob of super glue on that base, you will see, and I will smear that all over that base on the other side and um, put a bit of texture on there while I fly down the stick. If you ever spill any glue, don't like worry about it, find something useful to do with it. Here you go, look, there's crap all over that base. And the flight stand, and it goes smashing. 
Can you stand up? There we go. Get in there, get in there. That's all glued up. Get a, a better sense of where we are and what can be achieved. You see that open hand kind of guiding, almost as if it's going to grab it now on the way down and slam it into that tank. Bit of super glue on that hand. Put that one in first. Now that I know what angle everything's lining up. You know, looking at rivets, looking at fingers, lining them up against each other. So I can see there I'm lining up a couple of the rivets. Now I put that in with the super glue and then pulled it out just to make sure that the super glue was deformed and pushing around, making sure I'm actually getting a good contact and that it's not just kind of going off, barely touching the, uh, the inside, making sure it's actually doing some work. I'm just giving that one a little rough up because it's quite smooth. Again, to key the glue into it and scrape in a little bit of that thick gel glue. Put it there in three places. Oh, I know it's going to do the work. You'll notice I've put the uh, little plasma blaster nozzle. It looks fairly generic. It just looks like there's something happening inside that other hand. Because uh, it became apparent you could see what's going on there. Leaving it empty would look a bit empty. A uh, little wooden stick there, any of the glue squeezes out, it's vaguely absorbent and uh, just scraping it out of the way. Sweet, there we go. Gluing the toes on, fast forward, nothing very interesting. I went for one of the straighter ones and one of the curled ones, just for a bit of variation. You don't really see them because they're pointing downwards, but should you look at it from side to side, there's a bit of variation. Loads of glue on all the surfaces, give it a little wiggle, feel when it's getting a grip and that you can let go. Another job. I'm actually cheating them out a little bit. They don't, they're not sitting in the sockets so much as a little bit higher and further out. Um, so it's not technically in the ball socket, it's slightly out and up to one side. While the glue goes off, I'll let gravity hold it in place there. And fuck around with something else. What's next? Ah, the head. Now, uh, somebody else that got their starter set a bit early had spotted that, of course, it's not going to fit in there. Some people want to paint the head separately and then pop it in. Um, if you want to do it that way, weird. Not for me. I tend to paint models as one. Um, but you see it doesn't fit, so what you've got to do is put it on a bit of blue tack and shave away at it. If you put it on a bit of blue tack, you can push good and hard down onto the table and you won't slip and cut the end of your finger off. Oh no, I've cut my blue tack. Terrible. Uh, it doesn't involve a trip to accident and emergency. So yeah, you can see I've cut an angle off. It took a few tries. But that is about the, am the amount you want and you'll better pop that in. There we go, get it in there, slip the glue around, push it into place, get the angle right, chin up, yeah, you can't see the back of that. And it kept moving around, because obviously there's not a very big surface area. So I pushed a bit of blue tack onto his face, and as I pushed it in, you could see it wasn't moving, nice and even. So that's holding it in place while I carry on, gluing up the shins for the knee pads, blah, 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 blah. So whether you're building one of these for Horus Heresy or for your 40k stuff or just for shits and giggles, it's a really beautiful model. I hope you've learnt a few things, got some confidence to try things out with blue tack, dry fit it before you put your wet glue on, try out some interesting poses, get a little bit more dynamic um, and you can have something that's that much more interesting. Why the hell not? Um, it's a big centerpiece model. It's a shame to waste it on flat foot on the ground when you can be a little bit more fucking dynamic. So that's the big lad flying through the air and landing on poor little space marines or tanks or something. Oh. Um, pew pew pew, etc. So there she is. I've lit her nicely for you and everything. I hope you'll give it a go. Hope you've picked up a few hints and tips there. 
I've got other videos on general making, pinning, magnetizing and so on. Give us a whirl. Hope you come back, so like, subscribe and all that bollocks. Why not? I met the lead singer uh, over a 6x4 playing very early 9th edition 40k. He has got the lovely, lovely, loveliest orcs. He's a lovely man, he's got a lovely beard, and he makes horrible music despite all of that. Um, links in the bio. Do 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 do. Go check him out.